Sometimes I think that the wars in the heavenlies and the wars between the Lord and his people versus uh, Satan and his troops are missed by us because they happen quietly and slowly and we don't notice it so readily. I mentioned I just want to go a little bit further and talk about um, how for years Satan has been trying to destroy Protestant Britain and America too and this is pertinent to you. Are these the two witnesses? I don't know and there's the Jerusalem being spoken about in Revelation the two witnesses dead uh, and um, on the streets of Jerusalem does it mean spiritual Jerusalem heavenly Jerusalem I don't know I wouldn't like to say but all we all we do know is that the enemy is after the actual Christians you and me and most people are not fighting our warfare is mighty, it should be uh, powerful and it should be, it's involved in prayer and spiritual warfare and of course church people don't know how to do that but the Lord's people do. Uh, we can pray, we can just get before our Lord and speak to him about certain things and we pray his will be done in a given situation, we pray his will be done in someone's life where people are being thoroughly nasty against God's people and discouraging them and whatever we can pray God deal with that person and uh, I've seen it happen I have prayed about certain wicked people who are abusing and destroying the sheep and destroying uh, their lives spiritual lives and the Lord has dealt with them take them away destroy their health put them away in some little corner somewhere out of the way uh, there's a man I know who was a preacher, ran a church, up to no good. I didn't know until later what uh, no good he was up to, but let me tell you it was absolutely horrendous. And this man, I was doing terrible things. He was uh, leading my wife astray. Uh, he didn't touch her in that way, but he was leading her astray spiritually and separating her from him, me, and all that kind of stuff. Of course, driving a wedge in. And I prayed about this, thy will be done in all this, and uh, now the man is an absolute, physically a wreck. His health is absolutely destroyed, and he's now in a care home. And if I tell you he's no more than oh, 65 years old, that is something to say. But we are seeing Satan's people deliberately trying to destroy Protestant Britain so that they can be seen to be in bed with and equal to Ratty in the Vati and Ratty's people in Europe uh, that is the Catholic religion for those of you who are not used to my terminology Herr Ratzinger, Zeke Heil and all that the Pope of Rome Ratty in the Vati And we are seeing, for instance, Dirty Dave, the British Prime Minister, and this was all set up by Buggery Brown and Sodomite Town, the previous Prime Minister and British government. We've seen Dirty Dave continuing this, and when Ratty was over here, he said that they were going to publicly, in a speech, that they were going to pursue common goals between the Vatican and Britain. Well, what they're trying to do is build Babylon. They, are, they have got to destroy Christians and Protestant Christianity particularly if they to achieve that because they know very well the Christians will not join themselves. They know very well that we are the stumbling block. They're Satan's people, remember. And if Satan's to build his power base using his people on the earth, and remember Satan uses his proxies and the body of Satan in a similar way to the God uses the body of Christ, then he has got to tear down the testimony of the presence of uh, of the Lord God of Israel's people, the actual Christians. I don't believe there's more than 500 disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, narrow way Christians in the UK. Uh, for you, those of you who don't know, the population in the UK is 62, and, uh, 62 million thereabouts. And there's no more than about 500 disciples. There are quite a few religious people, but disciples about 500 
10 to 20,000 genuinely saved, but you'll know the majority of those go down the wide, take the wide gate and go down the broad road. They are deliberately trying to tear down Protestant Britain. They know full well that to bring the Antichrist into the country on a state visit is a deliberate slap in the face to Christians. They know that. They know that he's the Antichrist. They know full well he's one of them and he's not one of us. And they are trying to tear down British institution to make Britain just like the rest of the world. Because Britain once had a Protestant Christian heritage and they're working on this quietly, which is my point. They are quietly doing this behind the scenes and they are doing this little by little all over the place. There's an old saying, if you wish to cook a frog, and of course the French eat the edible frogs, and these are not little things, these are great big things. If you want to, if you want to eat a frog, cook a frog, it's no good you throwing this frog into a, pot, a pan of boiling water, it'll leap straight out. What you do is you put the frog, frog gently into cold water, you light the gas under the pot, and you slowly turn the heat up. And as the water temperature rises slowly but surely, the frog quietly dies before it realizes anything is wrong. And that's their, pro that's their methodology today. And that's why be careful, and all these things come in, both into any Christian assembly you attend, both into, uh, and into society generally, is to bring in little by little, little incremental changes and not to alarm people. A good example, for instance, is when uh, Her Majesty's people were lied into Europe by a man called Edward Heath, the former British Prime Minister, many years ago, he told them this was just a trading agreement with the arrangement with the local, uh, with the you know, European countries alongside, in a referendum. You don't need a referendum just for a trading agreement. It was more than that, but he didn't say so. Several years later, and uh, before he died, uh, the man uh, said he was on a, in a particular political show and someone challenged him about so He said, of course it was about a political, a federal Europe. But if he'd said that before the referendum, he never would have got the yes vote that he wanted. That's politics, of course. Politics is about lying, uh, ducking, diving, it's about deceiving and it's about uh, achieving your political end at any price uh, and it's nothing to do with truth whatsoever except where the truth happens to usefully coincide. Politics is a foul, disgusting and dirty business conducted by the children of the devil of course. You don't get men of God in politics. So what they've done of course they know darn well that the British people loathe Europe. They know the British people would be out of Europe in a flash if they could and they sometimes talk about a referendum about continued membership of the European Union. They, they renamed it afterwards. They, we were voting for a common market when the, it came in and then they quietly changed it to a European Union. And they're great Democrats these people you know about the European Union. We'll have a referendum but when the referendums like our continued membership of the European Union is likely to give them a, a uh, answer they don't want to hear, suddenly democracy disappears. It vaporizes and blows away with the morning dew. And of course, you know, we all know the politicians are up to something. A little while ago, recent, more, much more recently in the last, I think it's about in the last year, they wanted a president of Europe. So what they've done is they knew darn well they wouldn't get away with that, having a political president. And they know darn well that the peoples of Europe generally, not just the British, don't want a federal state. So what they did was they brought in a man who's just president of the commission, the European Commission. He has no powers. He has no powers. Oh, no, no, no. Don't get alarmed. He, I mean, he's only president of the European Commission. Ah, uh, really? We all know what's going to happen. A little bit lower down the road when they think they can get away with it, they'll start calling him the President of Europe. 
Did any of the people vote for this? Now Satan is building this, this empire and he is trying to destroy or anything that will stand in the way. And with the, with the um, a, a connivance and assistance of Tony Ten and the Sodomite men, Buggery Brown and Sodomite Town and Dirty Dave and the Dipsticks, the last three governments. With all these, uh, with the connivance of all these people, Satan is building Babylon. And he want, desperately wants to destroy Protestant Christians, people who speak the truth, because we speak Jesus Christ, the Word of God, and we speak the truth and the truth cuts right across a satanic empire because Satan's empire is built on lies and hypocrisy. Satan is the father of lies. But we speak the truth and we are a spanner in the works. So they've got to try and push us down, get rid of us, make us equal to everybody else. Very clever games they've been playing for some years. And they're doing this in your country, wherever you are, different ways according to what's required in your region. In order that they can build Satan's empire and have this godless evil empire where they have power and they are the gods. Because remember, the deception in the Garden of Eden was you should be as gods, knowing good and evil. And they're determined to be gods too and replace the Lord God of Israel. Everything in them hates God and won't let him be God. A bit like church people, really. But never mind. So, years ago, they knew they could not come against the monarchy. And they dare not come against the majesty of the Queen now. Because they know she's loved and respected. So they're hoping she's going to die soon. Because when Prince Charles takes over, he doesn't have the respect that Her Majesty the Queen has. So they backed off a bit from that one. So what they've had to do was bring in a whole load of immigrants from the 1950s onwards, people from all over the place, it started with people from the West Indies, um, and they started bringing in satanic, Quranics, horrid Hindus, benighted Buddhists, and bring them in and get, get them breeding on British benefits and social, social benefits, and then they said to the Church of England, the state religion, well, you're equal to everybody else now, you're not going to have any supreme place, that's discrimination. Clever, wasn't it? You can't come against the state religion directly and be seen to come against Christ and to be seen to come against church, the, the church directly or what they perceive to be the church. And the, even the Church of England believed something then. They didn't just believe in deviance and compromise then. They couldn't do that. They had to tear this down. So that's what they brought the immigrants in for. That's why they did it. And they are conniving and politicking slowly, hoping that the people don't notice. As long as they can keep you fed and entertained, the old principle of politics, bread and circuses, if they can keep you entertained and everyone happy, they can get away with it. And this is one of the reasons why they are absolutely terrified of another slump, a Wall Street crash, another Great Depression. Because they know darn well that it'll all fall apart if that, if that, and their whole satanic empire is going to come apart if that falls to pieces and people go, are not fed and entertained anymore. Because now they've been stripping out morality out of people for many, many years. They've been trying to de, uh, de christianize people for donkey's years and build this satanic empire. And they know darn well that now, if it comes to a slump and there's wholesale unemployment, the moral fibre that keeps people quietly queuing for their food and their benefits and quietly going about their business isn't in them now. And the satanic nature, which is now unbridled because they're giving everybody rights rather than responsibilities and discipline, uh, the satanic nature will come forth and how? I don't believe our God is going to let them get away with this quiet building and quiet trying to destroy Christian anything much longer. It looks to me as though Babylon the Great is just about to be cast down as we see in Revelation. The Lord and indeed Daniel's uh, uh, exposition of Nebuchadnezzar's vision 
we're just about to see it all destroyed. If that's true, we're about to see civil war, total social meltdown, and the total loss of everything we've ever known around. And that could be interesting, to say the least. But this is a slow battle going on between Satan's people and the Lord's people. As soon as Satan thinks he's won and he's got control, it'll all start hotting up and moving very quickly. But he'll, go, he'll do a slow thing until he's absolutely certain he's got the ground and then he'll come like a roaring tiger against everyone that stands in the opposite camp. I don't know if our Lord's going to let him get away with this because he's a rat on the rope, Satan's a rat on the rope. He can only go as far as God lets him. However, we all know what his end is. We've read the book. We, see, we know what the ending of the film is, don't we? We've read the book, yeah. However, that's what they're doing. And you watch for these little signs. At the moment in America, you have Obama bin Laden, the Kenyan Muslim immigrant illegitimate president of the United States in the Black House, as it should be called today. Haven't you? There he was gloating the other day. Gloating. We're no longer a Christian country. And if we were, whose religious Christianity are we going to follow? See, he's got, the Satan's brought in all sorts of variants and caused confusion and now he can say whose sort of Christianity are we going to, going to follow? So there's this opportunity for him to say those things. He also said, well, you know, if you read the, in the Gospel in Matthew, he said, you know, the Sermon on the Mount, he said, doctrine's so radical, I'm not sure our State Department could keep up with it. It's not radical, it's just normal for the actual Christians who are in it and have got it. And the United States of America couldn't do it because there's only a few thousand Christians in the United States in the same way there's only a few here. Um, but he was gloating about this and sneering, you know. And he's going to cop it. He really is going to cop it. Add to that, you also see old uh, Obama bin Laden bringing in the painted savage of the Hindu religion doing a satanic ritual in the White House. I think it was for Diwali or something like that. Uh, doing a, uh, a ritual in the White House. You cannot mix the Lord God of Israel and Satan. Of course, Obama bin Laden is just flying a flag of convenience as a Christian. You know, if that man's a Christian, I'm the Queen of China. The man's hoping, and he's indeed quite, uh, you know, quite sure that Americans, if he flies a flag of a Christian, then the Americans will be stupid enough to believe him and vote for him. And of course, lots of them have been. You know, the man's a lying, evil little Satanist, like the vast majority of politicians, of course. He's no different. He's probably just a puppet anyway being used by powers behind the scenes. But this slow battle is going on. Let us pray. Let's ask the Lord Jesus Christ, who is in command and control, that Satan be defeated, that these works of the devil that are quietly going on and they're hoping you won't notice, uh, be totally stopped, frustrated and broken. And I pray, let's pray that Babylon, Satan's work of building this world empire against God, be smashed and soon.